Extreme has a unique solution that fills in the gap between WPA2, WPA3 personal and A221X EEP. Now, we said WPA2, WPA3 personal is not really suitable for an enterprise environment because it's not considered to be uh, very rugged and secure. And A221X can be complex to maintain and deploy because you have to maintain certificates, you have to deploy additional servers, you have to integrate those servers together, and it can also sometimes be complex to troubleshoot. So how do we get the benefits of A221X without the complexity of that type of deployment? And the answer is private pre-shared key, or in short, PPSK. It's a unique solution offered by Extreme that provides a PSK on a per user basis. So every user gets their own pre-shared key and they can access network, the network, the wireless network for the same SSID. So you get the benefit of having one SSID up in the air, being able to assign different user profiles to different users and they also use different passwords when they're authenticating to, to the network, which means you get the benefits of 802.1x in terms of if a credential gets exposed or compromised, well, you only have to revoke that one credential, that one user. If you want to control user access in a more granular way than just on a per SSID basis, well, the PPSK gives you that option. You can have VIP users, guest users, BYOD users, all accessing that same SSID which will conserve the precious airtime and then still have different access control policies for all those different users. Um, and Extreme also offers a very extensible framework to integrate other application from the ecosystem to interact with the PPSK functionality uh, and it allows our partners and customers to create their custom lifecycle management applications for PPSK or wireless credential lifecycle management applications. So the private pre-shared key solution from a security standpoint sits between the 802.1x as a more complex but ultimately more secure scenario and WPA to WPA3 personal with a static PSK as something that's not supposed to be used in an enterprise scenario. So a PPSK type of authentication and deployment is definitely suitable for an enterprise scenario. And typical use cases would include BYOD, where you would bring your own device, your own personal device to the network, you would onboard it using your own domain credentials, which in turn would generate a PPSK for you. And that's one of the workflows that's actually natively supported within the Extreme Cloud IQ solution. You would be using it for IoT devices or devices that are always there in the office, need to be connected wirelessly, uh, wireless printers, uh, you could use it for uh, iPads, you could use it for wireless or smart TVs and similar. And the another use case would be for devices that can afford to have a long or difficult 802.1x authentication uh, and need to survive WAN outages because not every site when you're talking about a distributed network will have a radius server on site. So if you need a device needs to be connected securely and at the same time survive a WAN outage, PPSK is actually an ideal solution for that because the authentication will still work even if your WAN goes down. Uh, and you could also use it for guest access scenarios where uh, guest users would be given their own PPSKs by authenticating on a captive web portal or just leaving their details on a captive web portal. And that's another scenario that's already natively supported from Extreme Cloud IQ. And that solves the problem of that cafe where everybody's using that same PSK and risk being hacked. Uh, if they were using PPSK, then that problem would not be, uh, you would not be there. So to summarize, the PPSK solution is easy to deploy, especially compared to 802.1x. It's probably as easy as deploy as a static PSK. There's no need for PKI, a for private key or public key infrastructure, no need for certificates, no need for radio servers. Uh, the credentials can be managed in multiple ways. So we do offer 
or Extreme Cloud IQ has implemented a complete lifecycle management for PPSKs. And using APIs, you can implement your own lifecycle management solution if, if that is something that you want. And it solves the problem of static PSKs, credential distribution, redistribution, and managing those credentials when or if they get compromised. Let's look where the PPSK credentials are stored. You have two options. You can store the PPSK credentials on actual access points, or you can store them inside the Extreme Cloud IQ. And there's different scenarios tied to each of those use cases. Uh, the first one, so storing them on a local device or on the access point itself, um, means every time that a new credential is created or something is changed in Extreme Cloud IQ, you push that change down to the access points, and the access points will maintain their own copy of the database for those users. And when a user authenticates, the AP will do a lookup in its local database to authenticate that user. So there's no dependency on the cloud, there's no dependency on the WAN link, uh, everything is working locally, uh, both in terms of authentication and in terms of user profile and network access control uh, assignment. The limitation of using local PPSK is 10,000 credentials per device. Uh, or to be more precise, you can have uh, 10,000 credentials on that network policy because one network policy is applied for every device. Uh, so you are limited to 10,000 users. Now, 10,000 users sounds like a lot, and it is. Um, the only scenario where that number might become too low is when you have highly distributed networks with a single network policy and a lot of guest users. So on a daily basis, you're talking about hundreds of guest users that are constantly creating new PPSK credentials. But there's a solution for that, because in Extreme Cloud IQ, you can say, flush guest credentials out of the system, out of the database on a daily basis, for example. So forget those guest users. So for most local scenarios, that 10,000 PPSK or 10,000 user limitation shouldn't really be a problem. The user accounts are pushed down to the access point manually. So what happens is uh, an administrator has to go in to the Extreme Cloud IQ, and whenever there's a database change of uh, those users, the credentials are pushed by Extreme Cloud IQ down to the access points and the databases are synced. And from that point on, user groups, user profiles, network access control, um, network access policy rules, they are all stored locally on the access point. There is no more dependency on the cloud uh, and on Extreme Cloud IQ connectivity. So what are some of the use cases for using a local device storage option for PPSKs? One would be survivability in case of WAN failure. So when your WAN goes down, you still want your devices to be able to access the network, to authenticate, your access control rules to be applied, your user profiles uh, to be applied. So in that case, local device storage is perfect. So remote sites with unreliable WAN links or sites where you really can't afford a downtime in terms of connectivity when your WAN uh, goes down. It's very convenient for VIP users. Again, users that need to have connectivity all the time regardless of what's happening with your WAN. And critical devices, for example, in manufacturing, um, you want devices to be connected all the time, regardless of what's happening with the backend infrastructure, because the point of authentication is the access point itself, and you no longer care about what's happening with your radius server, with your Active Directory, wherever those may be. And if you want to use it for BYOD or guest access, it's actually convenient to use for small sites where you're not sure whether those guest users and BOD devices will be able to authenticate or create those credentials in a timely manner. Again, because maybe there's a lot of latency on a WAN link. Uh, maybe your WAN link is, again, unreliable, not available all the time. So every time where you cannot count on the WAN link or every time that you need to have immediate responsiveness all the time, a local storage PPSK would be a good option to use. The second option of storing PPSK credentials is cloud storage. Now, cloud storage means that the 
PPSK or user credentials are actually stored in Extreme Cloud IQ. The user profiles and all the access control rules are still local to the AP, but the actual user database sits within Extreme Cloud IQ. Uh, what this allows is you can then go over that 10,000 user credentials, you, that limitation goes away. You have the option of centrally managing all those credentials from multiple groups, so it creates an easier scenario for lifecycle management because everything is sitting in the same location, and if you're deploying a, a customized solution that would leverage APIs to manage those PPSKs, having everything in the same place is much more convenient because you don't have to track where those credentials are. And um, one thing to consider is, because the access point now needs to make a lookup in a cloud database, there needs to be a secure communication channel between the AP and the cloud. And that communication channel is achieved by using something called RATSEC protocol, which is basically a secure radius or radius over a TLS tunnel. And from a network configuration perspective, that's, that does require access points being, a, being able to reach Extreme Cloud IQ over TCP port 2083. So that port needs to be open from the AP to the Extreme Cloud IQ uh, public IP addresses. Uh, and that normally needs to be configured in your firewall policies. There are test tools available to test whether this port is open. Uh, we'll take a look at some of these in the lab. And it's pretty straightforward to see whether or not this port is open or whether or not it's open, it's, it's working. 